Welcome to the Caregiven Podcast. I'm Inga. And I'm Julie. And long story short, we have Caregiven. We are two mom entrepreneurs who have built an in-home care business from the ground up, guided every step of the way by God's care and fueled by agape love. Almost 14 years later, we felt called to create this podcast as a resource for families with caregiving needs. Whether you care for a family member or are looking for advice on professional caregiving, we want this to be a platform to support you. Each week, we will come to you with encouraging stories of families who have found the right balance for their loved ones, tips for how to care for them and you, and much more. We hope you continue to join us each week as we share in this exciting new journey together. Hello, Sunshines, and hello, Julie. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Just good? Yep. That's it. So we're done with our podcast. It's over already. Over that was before a fast it started. One. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me, Jules. What have you been up to? Uh, just getting hay off the ground into a pile by the house for the winter <laughs> with the cows. Yes. It's for them to eat. And you have had 5,000 trips so far hauling L- hay? At least. Wowzer. Yeah, and this heat and all. Yeah. It's been a long, long old haul, literally. Yeah. Literally. So today we are going to be talking about how to find the best help or the best things or the best whatever mm-hmm. that you have a need for. Right. So talk to me about that. How do you find, how do you find the best hay? When well, you go out looking for hay, how, well, how do you research it or how do you know right. where to go, what to do? Right. Well, the biggest thing is, is getting a network mm-hmm. of people that do the same thing as you Yep. and then finding, you know, getting comfort with the people like that. Yep. And and knowing their work ethic and knowing the quality and knowing their prices yep. and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, I really do think I am the same in so many scenarios where it's it's reaching out to the people that you know to say, mm-hmm. hey, I need this. Do you know, who would you recommend? Mm-hmm. I think that word of mouth thing happens. At well, least for me, that's always my go-to. Even um, when somebody's looking for home care, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's all about your reputation. Yep. And how straight up are you and, and yeah. everything about you. Yeah. So it's, it just bleeds into every very, um, well, yes, that's aspect. really funny. Um, even I did a home visit today because it was somebody that knew you guys through hey, y- y- <laughs> hey and um, yeah. So it just all kind of blends together. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> I heard something, actually I've heard it a lot of times over the years, but um, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. Oh. Which I think is really... It's actually quite huh. a good way to look at it. It really is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. Huh. All right. Well, you brought to us this week uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 11. Mm-hmm. And it says, For there will never cease to be poor in the land. Therefore, I command you, you shall open wide your hand to your brother, to the needy and to the poor in your land. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be talking about how we are... Um, getting help for each other, Mm -hmm. Um, everything from the very, um, the homey stuff to the plumbing, the electrical, to even some programs for seniors. Mm -hmm. And so how are we helping? Yeah. Yeah. I was listening to a podcast yesterday, um, and it's one I actually want to talk to you about. It was Eric Prince, but um, talking about, what did he say? Something about go out, going out and doing good. Mm. And I thought that was really awesome. I texted it to myself. He said some, actually quite a few things that I thought were really relevant to what we do. Nice. And take the approach, I think, that we try to take. And one thing that I know we do... Um, so when people call us and they're looking for home care, mm-hmm. we try to give them all kinds of options. And and especially if it's a situation where we are not going to be able to necessarily help in that scenario, we're going to try to get them lined out with where to go, who to talk to, what might be their next option. Yeah. Well, that's true because honestly, there's not a worse feeling than having somebody go on your word mm-hmm. and then the person you referred didn't do a good job. Doesn't come through. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think there's also not a worse feeling than when you call a company and they can't help you and they basically say, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And that's it. That's the end like, of the conversation. Well, wait a minute. Yeah. You got to be able to help me somehow. Can you, who would you refer if not you or? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's why I love um, the community that we have. We have some of our competitors that uh, we, we laugh and say that they're friendly competitors because uh, there's enough business out there for everybody. Yeah. So we need to make sure we help those people that are in need when they call and we, we can't help them. Mm-hmm. It's for important. Sure. Yeah. 
Well, what did you bring to us um, for a good news story? Oh, it's so cute. A man was driving his car when he saw an old lady stranded on the side of the road. He saw that she needed help, so he stopped his Pontiac near her Mercedes and got out. He smiled while he was approaching her. Still, she was worried as no one had stopped for hours. Moreover, he did not look safe as his appearance was so poor and shabby. He could see how frightened she was, so he tried to calm her. I'm here to help you. Don't worry. My name is Brian Anderson. The tire was flat, so he had to crawl into the car. While changing the tire, he got dirty and his hands were hurt. When the job was done, she asked how how much she owed him for the help. He smiled and he said, if you really want to pay me back, the next time you see someone who needs help, give that person the needed assistance and think of me. At the same evening, um, the lady stopped by a small cafe. The place looked dingy. Then she saw the waitress, nearly eight months pregnant, wiping her wet hair with a towel. The waitress was a sweet, friendly smile, although she had spent her her whole day on her feet. The lady wondered why someone who has so little could be so kind and giving to the stranger. Then she remembered Brian. The lady had finished a meal and paid with a $100 bill. The waitress went to get change, and when she came back, the lady was gone. She left a note on the napkin, you don't owe me anything. Somebody helped me just now, and now I'm helping you. So she thought that was wonderful, but when she picked up the the rest of uh, the plates and everything, there was four more $100 bills under the plate. That night when the waitress went home, she was thinking about the words the lady had said. She thought about how much she and her husband needed it, especially now with the baby coming in soon. She knew her husband was worried about that, so she was glad to tell him the good news. Well, then she kissed him and whispered, Now everything will be all right. I love you, Brian Anderson. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm seriously going to cry. I know. I know. I read that story, and at the end, I just was, I just verbally was like, Oh, awesome. Oh. Well, you got me, Julie. It's been a while since we've had a, a cryometer situation. Yeah, yeah. I love that oh. so much. That story just really hit. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, I wanted to talk to you guys today about a young man in his hundreds named David Flucker. <laughs> <laughs> a dedicated charity shop volunteer spends 12 hours a week commuting to and from work despite being 100 years old. Mm. David Flucker celebrated his centen- centennial birthday this week, but still went into work the next day as usual at the St. Columbus Hospice Shop in Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Scotland. Yep. Yep. David spends four hours traveling round trip to the shop, which he does regardless of the Baltic weather. Uh, The sprightly widower started working in the charity shop after he was diagnosed with prostate cancer and spent two weeks being cared for by hospice. He just wanted to pay it forward for the kindness he had received. It was a wonderful feeling to be doing something, he said. Um, It is two buses and a 20 minute walk to get from the shop and at least two hours, he explained. I work three days a week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, which are the busiest days. The grandfather of seven says the shop in Ocean Terminal gets a lot of donations and he checks them all out to see if they're okay. Mm. We get a lot of toys, books, jigsaw puzzles. Um, We have got to check them all over. He, but what he loves the most is the social aspect of the work. He said, um, people, he loves it when people just come in to chat. Uh, David, who was widowed in 2010, he also spends time building model railways, which he auctions off to raise money for the hospice. David retired at age 72, having worked as a printer and said, um, in his advanced years, they were no barrier to enjoying himself for his birthday on the 22nd. He was taken on a boat tour of the Firth of Forth and even received a card from the queen. Oh, wow. Isn't that cool? Oh. Yep. So what is that? Three days a week, he drives, he commutes four hours to go and work at this hospice because of what hospice did for him when he had a need. Oh, and he and graduated he, from hospice. He graduated from hospice, and then he just wanted to keep giving back. So oh, my word. Good for you, David Flucker. Very sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Hmm. All right. What are we talking about today, Jules? Oh, we are going to talk about helping your system, your seniors or anybody. Um, how are we going to find good help mm-hmm. in, in, in every avenue from the plumber to the electric to the dog groomer? How, oh. how in the world are we going to do that? Yeah. So well, I like this article that you had found on it and um, it seems pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. One of the first things that they talk about is the primary care physician. And mm-hmm. I thought this was interesting mm-hmm. um, that it says to start with your insurance card. I didn't even really read what the article or what the part of it said. I just needed to ad lib here for a second because I was thinking that's really smart because you want to make sure that 
whoever you go to is going to accept your insurance and right. or be in network if that's a situation so that you are getting um, so that it's the most fiscally reasonable. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then matching with your history, um, basically checking their education and affiliation and then remembering that it's OK to shop. Yeah. Oh, you have to like the person that you go to. Mm-hmm. You can't just go to a doctor and then walk out every time mad because you don't like him mm-hmm. or he was had, you know, everybody's got a different bedside manner. Right. And so that's important. Yes. And I actually, even in our own community, there are some pretty outstanding physicians that have a, a little rougher bedside manner. And that really makes a big difference. Oh, yeah. And then when you talk about um, matching your history, right, you want to make sure that you're seeing a physician that matches up with what it is that you need. Oh, um, and checking on education and affiliation again, you want to mm-hmm. make sure that you're going to somebody reputable. Mm-hmm. Um, ask around, get references if you need to, and then again, like we said, it's okay to shop. Right, it's okay to shop. We always we want people to call us, and we encourage them when they're looking for home care to <laughs> actually call the other agencies because at the end of the day, it's very personal, and you want to make sure that you're going with, I guess, the agency or the doctor or the office that makes you feel the best. Right. Right, right. Uh, the next one is kind of funny, but um, I guess uh, people use them. I do not. Um, but the, they're talking about a, fi- <laughs> <laughs> a fitness g- um, center or gym. Oh, what's that? <laughs> I've never heard of that before. <laughs> I've tried them. People use them, but yeah, not, not for not, me. Not I. But it, what's really funny is um, they they say that there's a uh, four mile rule. It's got to be under four miles, or you're Le- way less apt to keep going mm-hmm. isn't that interesting mm-hmm. so yeah um also of note make sure that you check on their safety protocols you want to have a gym that's like upgraded in its ventilation system and that the cleaning services are good um yeah yep go and go and try them out yep once again you're going to get a feeling mm-hmm. uh, some places are um gyms are uncomfortable no matter what sure but um you go in with all of your dig- dignity and just do what you got to do, yeah. you know, because who cares? Well, and it's an interesting thing because I think probably at the end of the day, every single person, regardless of what they look like, if they're there, they probably have, I mean, they, there's probably a little bit of insecurity oh. that goes along, you know, yep. whether you are that big giant muscly guy or the little tiny itty bitty one or somewhere yeah. in the middle. I it's am. Just, yeah, you're exposed, I, I feel like. Exactly. I, I remember one time a, a, a bigger gal was talking about the, um, and it was kind of being snarky to, and it was almost what you would think would be opposite, but she was being snarky to the little itty bitty gal. And the little itty bitty lady comes up and she goes, why do you think I'm this way? Because I come okay. here. Yep. Yep. And <laughs> it's all just a mental thing. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> One thing that they do say is to make sure that when you um, preview, pick the right time. Mm-hmm. And that's really actually very smart because yeah. if you plan to go there at five o'clock every when weeknight, everybody else you know, is but going. you preview at Sunday at 10 in the morning, mm-hmm. it's probably going to look a lot different, right? right? So that's, that is really good, smart advice you uh-huh. know? Yeah, to I get a true have... sense of what's going to be happening when you're going to be there. Um, buddying up is a good one. Yeah. You want to go to the gym? Nope. Yeah. This one's buddy. Says, you want to be my buddy at the gym? <laughs> Absolutely not. You wouldn't be my perfect <laughs> buddy because we wouldn't want to go at all. All right. Oh, uh, but sometimes the best a uh, gym is simply the one your friend uses. Oh yeah, that's true. That boils it down. Well, and actually I do need to go back in this a little bit because Kevin and I met at the gym. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. at one point. It really was um, uh, a blessing in my life. Yeah. Yeah. And then look for the things that they offered. Is that what you need? Did you right. want to be in a spin class? Do you want to be in Zumba? Right. Um, so do they offer those things? Right. Yeah. And basically right size it, right? So you don't necessarily have to be at the biggest facility mm-hmm. if what you want to do is available to you in a different one. So right. yeah, just think about that. Mm-hmm. What are you truly trying to utilize it for? Right. right. All right. So talk to me about finding the best hospital. <sighs> Well, sometimes you don't have a choice mm-hmm. if it's emergent situation. Yep. Um, like in our valley, we only have two, but yep. yet they're affiliated. So it's not like you have a, a big, big choice right. um, in that situation. But uh, honestly, in bigger towns and all that, they may have three or four hospitals. Right. And you just, once again, probably you're going to go where your doctor has the rights, the privileges to yep. work there. Um, but um, once again, 
look at your insurance yep. and find out what are their specialties. Yep. Again, matching that hospital to your needs. Cause mm-hmm. like you said, in this area, we do have two hospitals, but one has the capability of doing um, far more extensive things than the other. So, you know, depending on the situation, you may go to one versus the other. Right. Yep. Right. Yeah. When they were owned separately, there was a lot of more social dynamics. Yes in that because there was a lot of people that were mad at the one and and, then, <laughs> yeah, and so they would drive past that one to get to the second right nowadays everybody just throws up their hands and yeah. says well well it's a hospital yes <laughs> and actually we just had an experience with my grandma at the one of the smaller the smaller of the two mm-hmm. and um it it was really good yeah it was really, really well good. and you do know that the people that work there are just wonderful yeah in whatever hospital people are in this kind of work because they want to help others. Yes. I, I have to say, and I think I mentioned it before, but uh, the the staff in the kitchen, mm. they were the best of anybody. Oh my gosh, they were just right <laughs> on it. And you were you had not even finished your first meal before they were taking your order for the next meal and prompt. Oh my gosh, the food was great. Yeah. And the food was good. <laughs> the food was good. Oh, so. isn't that funny? Yep. That's usually the thing that cartoons are made of. Is the food at the hospital. <laughs> For, sure. For um, sure. Finding the best surgeon. Um, that goes back to like what we talked about with your primary physician. Mm-hmm. But really, honestly, you have to know what your condition is. And then you need to really look into it. Because mm-hmm. there's there's all kinds of surgeons out there. There are. And you, you know, basically maybe take a look at who are the potential candidates for surgery. I know that um, when Kevin had to have knee surgery, we spent a lot of time looking at different orthopedic surgeons and and he chose the one that he felt was best for his particular situation not to say that the others wouldn't have done a fine job but yeah just assemble those and look at what your options are and do a little bit of research on it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ask tough questions man yeah you're the patient you have to you have to you don't have to just get shoved into one area uh, because somebody said, this is who I'm going to write you a referral to. Right. <clears throat> that's that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of going off of uh, your body. Now we're going to talk about some of the other th- big things in your life, mm-hmm. which one of them is your car. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how in the world do you find an auto repair shop? I do not know. And <laughs> how do you find that? <laughs> oh, wait, there it is. <laughs> So basically, uh, do real life testing mm-hmm. uh, and, and pre screen different shops. And they say bring your car in for a basic service like an oil change or a tire rotation. Mm-hmm. Um, you and I are pretty lucky. We know personally people yes. that um, w- are really, really accommodating to us. Yeah, the best auto repair facility in my world is actually like 50 feet away from me. <laughs> The neighbor, but he's yeah. just so darn good that when well, you have an issue, so he's so darn busy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Because I think that uh, t- that is a lot of the problem nowadays mm-hmm. is is uh, getting parts yep. and and then just getting in. Yeah, just getting well, in. We had we just had a situation with Bailey's truck, and and um, you know, unfortunately, the neighbor is I mean, he's booked out till September, and so wow. we we have other friends that are in the profession, and so we kind of are working with them one was a tow truck driver that got it to the next shop the next shop said if you get it down here and it's sitting here I yeah so I the good thing is is that there are options and the the other really great thing not so much for the person that's waiting for the car to get repaired but for the business is that there's a lot of business going on so you know they're they're having success that way right right um and so um it said look for the three c's uh, number one is confidence. Do they seem properly trained, organized, and consistent in the way they do their business? Mm-hmm. Do they clearly describe what they'll do? Uh, second is cost. Do they seem reasonable compared with other shops? Uh, make sure that they offer estimates in writing. And then convenience. Are they near your home or office? Mm-hmm. That's really a big deal. Yeah. I mean, I just had to have you um, pick me up the other day just for uh, something that was going on with my vehicle. Mm-hmm. And um, it was relatively close, but still yep. a pain in the keister. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time those are. <laughs> anyway, and then pay attention to, like, neatness. You know, mm-hmm. when you go into a shop, you want to make sure that it's clean and organized and just um, that you get a good feeling when you go there. Yeah. Yep, yep. I, oh, and then training, you know. Just mm-hmm. make sure that you're looking and maybe asking those questions. Um, a lot of guys, I think, that have been doing this for a million years, it's just the school of hard knocks, right? But there's fancy, weird Every, stuff coming out. Technology. Yeah. I mean, it seems like it's getting more and more so that 
you know, I, I, for example, my, my vehicle, mm-hmm. I bought it at Ford. I take my and do my oil changes there because I just think if I do a trade in, they'll know all of the work that was done. Well, I asked them to do a fuse for me and they couldn't do it, just change a simple fuse. And then they couldn't do something with my tire. So I had to bring it in for another visit mm-hmm. because they didn't do the tires that because everything was so fragmented mm-hmm. drove me crazy and I'm not going to do it anymore. Right. I'm not, I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> I'm not going to play with that. I thought I was being smart by saying, well, you guys know this vehicle cause you're the only ones that worked on it, right. but it became so inconvenient for me right. that even when I had a, a hole in my tire, it took them two visits before I could get them to say that there was actually a problem when I kept oh telling gosh. them there was. And so I won't buy my tires there again. Yeah. I just won't do it. Yeah. I, it I was so frustrated. And um, and well, that's just a classic th- example. And that's the other thing. You might do all of your research. You might, you might, I mean, this shop might come highly recommended or there might be a million reasons. But if you have a bad experience, mm-hmm. understand you can make change. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. 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 Money. Oh, boy. Finding the best financial advisor. Oh, yes. So they do say that looking for fee-only advisors um, is a good way to go. And that means that the only person paying them is you. Fee-based advisors may be compensated by companies whose financial products you buy, giving them an incentive to sell investments that might or might not be in the best interest. Oof, that is annoying. Mm -hmm. Don't fixate on exotic credentials. Um, Basically, yeah. Uh, there's so many in every industry, right? There's a gazillion letters that can go behind a name, okay. but, um, consult with your net network, talk to people. I was really lucky. Um, I don't even know when Kevin and I started out with Edward Jones, we, I don't know how we started out, but that guy ended up retiring. And so he moved us to another and, and then we ended up with Jake from state farm. Who's actually <laughs> Jake from Edward Jones, but it's funner <laughs> to call him Jake from state farm. And, um, I've been super, super happy with him. And uh-huh. if anybody asked me, I would say That's he's been great to go to. Yep. He's been wonderful. Yeah. And then also look, ex- explore their past, you know, so make sure that they've got a, a good record, clean record. Well, the other thing about your financial advisor is actually, in this case, it almost benefits to use a bigger company because make sure that they are, your your advisor is covered mm-hmm. with any kind of wrongdoing mm-hmm. that you'll be compensated if there was anything ever done. An issue, yeah. Funny, funny business. Yeah, that's true. I hadn't thought about that, but mm-hmm. that extra layer of protection, of protection for protection, us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and one thing that I do like about ours is you can call them and they answer the phone. Oh, and a lot of times yeah. when you're being like dealing with huge corporations, it's difficult. And yeah. we're fighting that on so many levels right now internally, just with insurance companies and different things. And mm-hmm. um, just had a terrible experience with a local uh, home improvement store. And to even get somebody to answer the phone Ugh. is like, it's just wild. Yeah. Anyway, I hate that. Hopefully you never need to have a lawyer, but um, mm-hmm. if you do need to have one, yep. what do you think? What is what yeah. is it telling us? Well, it, it says ask other lawyers. Mm-hmm. So um, you may need somebody to do your will. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, who, in, but your friend just does bankruptcies or something. Right. You say, who would you use? Right. And, and that's, that's a good, because yep. they know the business. Yep. Again, it's that networking mm-hmm. thing. And then seek out relevant experience, mm-hmm. again, for what, what you need your attorney for. Make sure that that is something that they specialize in right. or have experience in. Right. Um, grill your candidates. It's okay. It's okay. I think so many times, even like with doctors, we go there and we feel like um, almost, I don't want to say small, but somewhat insecure because mm-hmm. they're the professional, but I still think that we're, we're the key player in it. Right? right. So you have to feel good about who you're working with and it's okay to ask questions. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Finding the best bank. Um, if you are paying any fees, you should look at o- other banks. Mm. And I can't tell you how many times just the other day or yesterday we were in a different town and this huge, huge structure was going up and there was a sign it was going to be another bank Mm -hmm. they're everywhere yeah and um but a bank can make you feel really good when you walk in or they can make you feel really tiny yeah and I don't like that yeah I agree yeah I agree so you just have to feel very comfortable about where your money is Mm -hmm. we're lucky here in this community we we work with a couple of different banks and they 
have been really good to us. And Mm -hmm. um, one thing that they say when you're trying to seek that out is to be honest about what you need. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's helped us because like I said, we've, we have two different institutions that we work with and we've always been very forthcoming about this is what we're trying to do with this particular institution. And this is what we're trying to do with this one. Right. And they both have different things that I feel like they're better at. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're very smart. I had a situation one time um, where I needed to get a farm loan Mm -hmm. And, and a farm loan is different <laughs> and not as well known anymore like they used to be. Mm-hmm. And um, I went to even banks that said farm in their name, <laughs> and they still did not understand what I was talking about because my assets aren't necessarily bank assets, assets but they're in the field, <laughs> and they will be going to the bank after they get sold in you know October, November. Um, and finally, I was able to find a kid that, um, he was a younger guy, he had worked on the east side of the state and did a lot of farm loans and totally could speak my language. <laughs> yeah. But I had to find him. Yeah. It, it was shocking, and I was so mad. I, I was remember. just like, all I remi- all I need is this for this long or this. How do I? Ma- how am I going to work this? But they didn't understand the the situation in yeah. in in terms of the assets that were there that they just weren't sitting in a bank. Right. It, it was well because if it was sitting in a bank, you wouldn't have needed their help. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But found the guy. He was wonderful. And we were able to move on. Yep. <laughs> Focus on convenience. Yep. W- as with everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then branch out if necessary. Right. Right. Yep. Uh, landscapers even, mm-hmm. for goodness sakes. Uh, and let's see. You have to be a little bit careful because you got to know if I only want to spend $1,000 on this project, mm-hmm. things can get blowing out of proportion really fast. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a clear vision on what you want and how much you're willing to spend. Yes. Right right now, I know that this isn't quite landscaping, but kind of my mom's porch. Mm -hmm. Oh, she had um, one guy, she just said, give me an estimate. It was over $18,000. And she was like, uh, no. So now though, that's great because now she knows exactly what she wants to spend, um, and, um, how she's going to structure that, Mm -hmm. um, and, and use somebody different. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think honesty about your budget is a really important thing. Uh And then, um, they do say with landscaping to, you know, have the conversation about substitutions, Mm -hmm. right? So Mm -hmm. 65% of landscape professionals said that in a recent survey, they expect there to be plant Expect the plant shortages to continue all the way even into 2023. Oh. So um, basically a, a landscaper should be able to recommend substitutions for what maybe you wanted to start with, but definitely have that talk because you don't want to get into your project and then <laughs> not be able to get what you thought you wanted and then and then what? Waste right? all that time having yep. to go back anyway, yep. right? Yep. yep. Um, in la- landscaping, are you able to do any of the work? Right. That would save a lot. Sure. And then also, um, they say, like, walk the neighborhood. If you see homeowners with landscapes that you admire, um, basically, they'll probably love to talk about the landscaper that they used. <laughs> I've done that before, yeah. where you're going through the neighborhood, and you're like, oh, I love what they did with that. And you take a picture and hope that nobody's watching you and thinks that you're a weirdo. But, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then um, this is on the same vein of, of talking about, like, home, home things, we're talking about painters. Mm-hmm. Um, and... A good paint job has always taken time, Mm -hmm. but um, now add uh, the time spent waiting to start. Uh, Basically, they say that there is such a backlog now. Well, and that's for everybody because staffing for everybody is tough. Yep. I mean, I have heard of places that are are years out. Mm Mm-hmm. Years. It's crazy, yeah. yeah. And that one thing that they say is actually to get paint store referrals, Mm -hmm. which that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I mean. Because basically, who, you would think if they're good to work with at the paint store level, mm-hmm. right? And then I'm sure the paint guys probably hear about it if they're not. Oh, yeah. 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 And and the cheapest is not always the best. Yep. You, that is for darn sure. You've got to make sure that you are finding somebody that um, is the quality that mm-hmm. you need. Yeah. So, and that goes along with your home remodeler. Mm-hmm. Um, real estate agents are hot commodity right now. Yep. And, um, I think they almost are asking people to please sell so I can sell. 
Oh, yeah. It's just wild right now. Yeah. Once again, I think the, the major uh, thing that keeps coming up is just network, mm-hmm. get references, stick to your budget, mm-hmm. um, and go with your heart because you have to feel good about what you're getting into. Yeah. No matter what, no matter if it's surgery or getting your house painted. Yeah. Yep, for sure. So um, another thing that we just quickly wanted to go through was a guide for assistance um, programs for our seniors. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's a lot of them out there that people aren't aware of. Um, And so uh, basically um, there's income and tax help for seniors, uh, Social Security, um, SSI, state supplemental income programs, tax help, um, like taxes. There's a lot of people that do taxes. Mm Mm-hmm. And so a lot of places actually will do it for free for seniors. Yeah. Doesn't the Agency on Aging here Mm -hmm. in town have a program for that? Mm -hmm. And then also like Medicare and prescription help. Don't they help people get set up with that, I do believe? Yeah. Yeah. Medicare is in a world of its own. Oh, boy. There's part A. There's part B, B, C, D. D. (laughs) And then there's the medication portion of it. Mm -hmm. Um, It just... Go to your agency on aging or whoever your specialist is in your area yep. and have them help you yep. because that is definitely um, a, a quagmire. And the other thing about Medicare that a lot of people don't know is you have to have it because if you don't have it, you will get fined. Um, my mom is very, very healthy, and she actually um, at one point got fined like $1,500 because she didn't have the medication um, portion of it. And she's like, well, I didn't need it. Oh, wow. But they make you have it I or you get fined. That. Yeah. We, we had a client at one point, I think that they had been super, super healthy and mm-hmm. didn't do anything with Medicare. And gosh, I did not know that was yeah, a get, thing. You'll get a fine for it. So look Holy. into all of that. Um, and even if you are incredibly healthy, mm-hmm. you don't know when you're going to need it. Oh yeah. And it's, it's pretty, um, darn, uh, reasonable. Yeah. And, and it's just a, a it's just an absolute um, safety net. Yeah. Also, basically, there are ways out there to help with like prescription drug costs. Mm-hmm. You can search online at Rx Assist. Um, there are medicine assistance tools that will match people with um, the programs that they might be eligible mm-hmm. for. Good Rx mm-hmm. has been phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And honestly, <laughs> um, just maybe price shop a little bit on pharmacies because I was using one that's a pretty well-known big chain and I decided to just, you know, shop around and found out I was paying like triple or quadruple what you would pay. Now I just go to one of the grocery stores and it's great. Yeah. I'll tell you, Mm -hmm. um, just a a week ago, my daughter had a wrist surgery Mm -hmm. and they were not going to let her be discharged till she got her medications at the hospital. Well, she called me and she was really upset. Plus she was on just getting on off the anesthesia. So she was kind of goofy, <laughs> but she was really upset because she said that the hydrocodone that she got, which she hadn't even really wanted it, but they, they made her take it, mm. um, was going to cost her $500. And I was like, oh, that's not right. That's way more. And I pulled up good RX real quick mm-hmm. and just put in hydrocodone and it was, it was so much cheaper. I mean, yeah, like, I was just like, wait a minute. There's like a fraction. <laughs> oh, it was just disgusting. So anyway, I knew she didn't feel good. I knew she just wanted to go home, but mm-hmm. she was also really, really mad about the money. So she actually did advocate for herself. She went back in there and got somebody that looked at that and went, oh my word, we, <laughs> we, ra- we rang that up wrong. Oh, thank goodness. And it ended up just being dollars yeah. versus hundreds of dollars. <sighs> but she had to go back or she would have been out yeah, how many people just would have just paid it because they mm-hmm. thought that they that was what they had to do? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that yeah. is crazy. Yeah, I, I I was just like, that is not right. You need to take that back, and you need to uh, make sure that they take care of you. I've heard a lot of times about people if they have like extensive procedures at hospitals or mm-hmm. whatever, and then get the bill and later have the hospital like go back through it and make sure. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of times that hundreds if not thousands of dollars yep. have been overcharged yep you just um, gotta just advocate I, yeah yeah always always look into it um I, I guess there's hearing aid help out there so there's the Aho- affordable hearing aid project and that is through lions clubs actually across the u.s oh interesting yeah 
Huh. Um, National Hearing Aid Project. Uh, this helps to supply hearing aids to low-income U.S. residents who lack insurance to cover the devices. Um, what else? Here Now, <laughs> a national program run by the Starkey Hearing Foundation, and Help America Hear, Miracle Ear Foundation. And then also you could just contact a hearing aid manufacturer to ask about participating in clinical trials. Oh, my um, goodness. If you wanted to, if that was an issue for you. Huh. Yeah. Uh, mobility aids, um, and those are like your walkers, your mm -hmm. scooters, and all of that. Canes, mm -hmm. uh, they come in such an array of sizes and dollar amounts. Yes. You have to find the one that's right for you. Yes, and I do believe that Medicaid um, maybe can help cover the cost of some of that, but I think that it's um, not not for every single device that you might want. You might get to pick one. Mm -hmm. Oh, Yeah. yeah. Did yeah, I say Medicaid, sure. Medicare. 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 Yeah, yeah, as long as your doctor is willing to prescribe that for you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Dental health, back, um, we had just talked about dental health a little while ago. Yep. Um, and so there's all kinds of um, dental care programs out there, insurances. Mm -hmm. Donated uh, dental services programs. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, just speaking up. Mm -hmm. Just when you go in to have whatever the procedure is, whether it's a doctor's office visit or a dentist or whatever, just kind of saying, being honest about where you are budget wise. I had a situation. I'm so mad about it. Um, basically, because I do the Christian health ministries sharing. Mm -hmm. And so I had an MRI back in actually in January and I did not get a bill until June. So I started self-paying um, and then I submitted everything off to Christian Healthcare, which they are phenomenal, by the way. Um, and basically, I then needed to go back to the billing office to get a copy of everything. Mm. And so they gave me this document that said, well, if I had paid it by April, I would have gotten almost a $2,000 discount. Oh, my word. Well, guess what? I didn't get the bill until June. Oh. And I said, well, how would I have known to pay by April if I didn't even get anything until June? Like, honestly, I started questioning what was going on? <laughs> Why had I not received anything? Right. And so I, of course, it got blamed on the mail. Oh. <laughs> a significant problem. Oh. But anyway, I'm like, that's just crazy because that was almost $2,000 had I have had the information on time. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't get well, it. Well, and that is that is really hard because even with Bailey's surgery that she just had, mm -hmm. I'm just like, start looking for the bills. Yep. But there's so many different facets of that. Yep. You know, you got the procedure, but who's the anesthesiologist? Who's the doctor? Who's the x-ray? Yeah. You know, the meds. Um, the, you don't know. Yeah. Well, yes, because then when I started trying to go back and get this information to resubmit to Christian Healthcare, um, I was talking to one department or entity, I guess, I don't know. And they had a portion of it and they had no idea what I was talking about <sighs> on the other. It did not help that I had flunked my first MRI <laughs> and required a lot of assistance to get the second one oh, done. Oh no! By assistance, I mean they had to knock me on my butt because <laughs> I could not go in the tube. But oh. anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just interesting because huh. a lot of times if you do ask for that cash discount, you know, maybe I, I, this has happened many times at the orthopedic. If it's um, something that's being billed to insurance, it's going to be 500 plus dollars. Yep. But if you pay cash for it today, it's 125. Yeah. Like, how does that even work? Oh, yeah. We wonder why insurance is that's so wild. That's why we've wild. got problems with the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But ask, ask, definitely. Goodness. Uh, senior housing assistance and rental help. Mm -hmm. There's a big crisis out there right now for any kind of rental help. Yeah. yeah. I've always wanted to look a little bit more into what section eight is because I hear that a lot with mm -hmm. a lot of people that we help care for. And that's that, um, like a voucher type program. Right. And then you hear about buildings or apartment complexes being built specifically that are for this section eight. So right. Yeah, there's, right. there is a lot of help out there. Um, you just have to start asking questions. So like in our community, I think you start at the county level. If I'm not right or wrong. If I'm not right. If I'm not right or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm I'm trying to remember that human HR it used to be on Main Street. A community action partnership. Yes, community action yes. partnership. So every community does have those. Do they? Yeah. See, I wasn't aware that that was actually a like a government agency. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I thought it was like a nonprofit something. Mm -hmm. But who knows? We don't yeah. know what we're talking about. So let's just move on. <laughs> I don't know why you people keep listening to us, but I'm glad that you do. Yes, yes, keep it up. Mortgage assistance, uh, Fannie Mae, high loan to value, refinance, 
refinance options. Mm -hmm. Freddie Mac. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Do you think they were married? I don't know. <laughs> Freddie Mac makes me want macaroni and cheese. Yes, <laughs> yes. Reverse mortgages. Um, I think those could be pretty cool. You know, put a reverse mortgage on and go live your life. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? But do your research. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And then um, back to the home repairs, improvements, and modifications that we were talking about. Local and state programs um, do help a lot with, like, ramps mm -hmm. um, and uh, different things that need to be modified in the house. Uh, one time we had a, a gal that had um, MS, and she actually could not move around, but they were able to do this fancy track system, mm -hmm. and oh, it yeah. actually was attached to the uh, the ceiling, and she would put be in a hoist thing mm -hmm. and um she could move around the house yeah just kind of because they kind of scooched her, her yeah yeah wow um home improvement help and i think it, this kind of goes back to that community action partnership is basically there are like weatherization assistance programs there's the liap program mm -hmm. um you know th there is a lot out there you just need to get connected with either your agency on aging or like that community action partnership mm -hmm. and then just start asking them questions because within those organizations, they have the ability and the knowledge to get you set up with a lot of other things. Right. Yep. And even your electricity, like you were just yeah. saying, yep. sometimes what they'll do is actually take the, uh, the chunk that you historically do monthly or mm -hmm. yearly and then divide break it, it up, yep. break it up monthly. So like it's a budget not, billing type. Yeah. So <laughs> high in the summer when you're using the AC or so right. high when you're using the heat in the winter. Ours is high all year long because it seems <laughs> like we're either running heat lamps for the lambs or air conditioners for the lambs, or it's not the humans that create the giant. <laughs> I'm like, if we ever go to sell this place and the people that are going to buy it, look at the electric bill, they're, they're going to think, no way, this right? place is no way, but it, it's all the animals. I <laughs> swear. <laughs> oh, I am on funny. budget billing though. Oh, good. It's not a budget though. Yeah. I mean, it's not a, it's not a, a low budget. It's a very large budget. <laughs> So you're on that average monthly thingy? Yeah. Is that what that's yeah. called? It fluctuates just a little bit. Okay. Um, you know, 20 bucks maybe, but it, it always kind of, hmm. yeah, it's always right in that same range. And gotcha. Gotcha. Sometimes I look at it and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm ahead of the game. And then I look at it and I'm like, oh, I'm very far behind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, in-home help for seniors. Uh, this is a tough one. Mm -hmm. um, there are some programs out there like Montana, we have the lifespan project where they'll give you like, um, if you lifespan respite, yeah, yeah, you know, up to six hundred dollars that you can use somebody right. to to do respite care for you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely, in terms of having things paid for, yeah, it, there's not a lot of options no. at this point. Mm -mm. Um, you know, if someone's on Medicaid or if they're a veteran and they meet certain criteria, there might be some home care available, long term care insurance policies, right? Um, but like you're saying, I mean, in terms of state aid, very limited, not, not a lot, very limited. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody will have a procedure and think they need 24 seven care and they're on that program. It's not going to take care of it. It won't. No, no, no. So that's, it's tough. We, that's what we deal with daily. Yep. Yeah. A uh, downsizing help. There is a, uh, a, a group um, it's a franchise and they actually will go in and help you downsize mm -hmm. and they'll um, help move you or they'll help you have a auction mm -hmm. um, to get rid of your stuff. Uh, but once again, check your references on that. Mm -hmm. And then legal help. Um, I think most don't most areas have some sort of like a legal assistance mm -hmm. in their within their county. Yeah. Um, programs. If you meet certain criteria. Yep. Yep. Technology help for seniors. Um, actually, there's a lot of young kids that will go and help people. Yeah. It's, yeah I have my children to help me. <laughs> um, but there are programs out there where literally they'll get a, a high school student with somebody that's having to learn how to use an iPad. Right. Um, so there is programs out there for technology help. Yeah. yeah. We have Nana. <laughs> um, so one of the girls that shows lambs with us, Layla, her grandma, Nana, is uh man she is she is very proficient on technology really? and she always blows all of us away oh, cute. and they tease me because they're like you didn't even know how to airdrop and nana knows how to airdrop 
like, well, la di da. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Nana's great. She's, she's, huh. we need to, if anybody out there needs help with technology, you just oh. need to connect with Nana. Nana, I am going to be calling you. <laughs> yes. Well, that's oh. cool. Yep. So basically, I think that it pretty much just boils down to ask a lot of questions, mm -hmm. you know, ask for references, mm -hmm. speak within your circles, and, um, confirm that people are you know have the professional either the licenses that they need or whatever that looks like oh yeah and um yeah w saying that um we're we're looking for a roofer right now yep. well there's a lot of people out there will do roofing mm -hmm. but do they have their actual certificates oh yeah their um, liability insurance yep. and all of that what the heck is that a contractors yeah um, like a montana contractors yeah and it's not just for roofing it's for all of them, mm -hmm. uh, painting, yep. logging, any of that. Yep. And those things, at least in the state of Montana, and I would assume that would be the same way everywhere, you can go online and confirm, look up licenses and just verify yeah. that they do exist. You need to do that. Absolutely. You need to do that because there's a lot of riffraff out there. We've yep. heard lots of stories where somebody wanted to have their um, their driveway recoded or whatever, and they came and took your money, but then they never came back. Yeah. Uh, roofing so. was a big scam there for a while. Yep. And um, that's what I need right now as a roofer. Yeah. And um, my projects don't look very fun, so I'm having a heck of a time. And also with that staffing situation, nobody's got time to come do a piddle fart project right. like mine. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I uh, So, you know, we do the buckles for Montana Royal. And we usually do somewhere between 70 and 80 buckles mm. in order. And so I was talking to the um, buckle maker today just kind of having a little conversation with her. And she said that she spent the weekend packing up 650 buckles. And I was like, oh, I thought ours was a pretty big job. <laughs> Evidently not so much. <laughs> like, yeah, we have a 300 order. We got a 500 oh, buckle order. Oh, wow. Which is awesome for her. I mean, that's great. Mm. I was like, geez. But if I ever needed a buckle, I would ask you because you would then be able to tell me yep. who was the best. Yes, absolutely. See, there you go. Asking yep. questions. There you go. <laughs> All right, Grandma saying. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, so speaking of fixing something in the home, Blaine's grandpa said, "You need only two tools in life: WD-40 and duct tape. If it doesn't move and should, use WD-40. If it moves and it shouldn't, use duct tape." <laughs> the other thing we use around our house is the hay twine. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> baling twine. Um, zip ties also are oh, a big one. <laughs> Just yeah. turn me loose. Just give me a bag of zip ties. And if I'm like putting, like I had to build the dogs. So we've got the little livestock guardian puppies and they have a <laughs> pen inside the pasture. So they, you know, when they're unattended, they're in the pen and then we let them out when we're there. But yeah, I was like, just give me some panels and give me some zip ties and then leave me alone. Everyone go away. I will build this. We'll get it put together. <laughs> are they staying in? They are staying there in. You it go. is working wonderfully. It, yeah. I wouldn't be the one who wanted to have to take that down. <laughs> You think I have a zip tie every inch? Actually, the thing is, I had a limited number of zip oh, ties, okay. so I had to, I couldn't I had to be frugal with them. You had to be a little strategic. Yes, I <laughs> couldn't just go wild. Oh, that's funny. Awesome, you guys. Well, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't yet, please go subscribe. You can do that on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. Um, check out our Apaga Karen Share Facebook mm -hmm. group and leave us a review. Join in the conversation. You can send us information at thecaregivenpodcast at gmail .com. And I think that wraps it up. So peace out, Girl Scouts. Awesome, awesome. Have a good day.